is to know more about our blessed Lord. Amen. And that's our, our purpose of gathering here, is for that purpose. And, now, and to pray for God's sick children. And this morning we had a, a wonderful blessing from the Scriptures. We are trying to take each time of the service a part of I'm teaching in the book of Hebrews, have been for the last couple of weeks now. And now, if the Lord willing, we'll continue on Wednesday night, then on Sunday morning and Sunday night, on for as long as I'm to be here in this time. Not a revival, but it's revival, a meeting on our regular nights. Amen. And so we're very, very happy to have this time to meet with our good friends around about in the cities, and around about the fall cities here. And if, um, if we'd happen to have a cancellation or something, it might be that the Lord might lead us pretty soon to maybe we could have a few nights maybe in the gym or something after a while if the Lord seems to lead that way to Amen. a place where we could get our people together. And we've seen people as this coming up going back saying there was not room to, to come in. Of course, the tabernacle's awful little. It just seats a very, very few people. And we are... Uh, just so glad that you're willing to come out and sit in the heat uh, to hear the word of the Lord. And we're praying that God will exceedingly, abundantly bless you and to help you. And now, tonight we won't, we're we beginning on the fourth chapter. How many were here this morning? Let's see your hands. Oh, that's wonderful. Practically all of you. And we are on beginning on the fourth chapter of the book of Hebrews. Oh, what a marvelous book. Are you enjoying it? And it's comparing Scripture by Scripture. And Paul, before he would ever witness to his experience, he first had to go down to Arabia and find out by the Word if it was the truth. I like that. And this morning's lesson, we found out in the teaching this morning that Christ was the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Paul found that the same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel had met him on the road to Damascus. We found out that the pillar of fire that led the children of Israel out of the wilderness to the promised land met Paul on the road to Damascus and called himself Jesus. Amen. Then we find out the real supreme deity of Jesus Christ. The whole book here is just a revelation of Jesus Christ. And he come, we find it in sundry times and in divers manners. God spoke to the fathers through the prophets. In this last days, through his son, Christ Jesus, he's revealed himself. And the book from Genesis to Revelations is nothing but one constant, perpetual revelation of the Lord Jesus. And we find out that He was the one that was in the burning bush. We find out that He was the one that was with God before the foundation of the world. And we find out that in the New Testament, He was God and man together. And then when he left the New Testament to go into heaven, he said, I came from God and I returned to God. And then when Paul met him, he was in the same form that he was when he led Israel, a pillar of fire. And Paul looked him right into the face, being unconverted, and it caused him to have eye trouble the rest of his days. He went blind. And for several days he could not see nothing at all. He had to be led to a street called Straight. And God had a prophet down there that he spoke to by the name of Ananias who came in by a vision and laid his hands on Paul and said, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And we find out then that that same Holy Spirit, that same Lord Jesus, came to Peter in the form of a light and delivered him out of the prison. And we find that that same Lord Jesus in these days is still in that pillar of fire light that's leading His people, His church. 
performing the same thing, giving visions, come in and lay hands on the people by a vision. The Lord Jesus, who met last Sunday morning at the house and said there was a man coming, black-headed, graying. He was a Greek. His wife was middle-aged and would be weeping at the altar. Some of them had told it and know what was happening. He was both crippled. The, uh, the balance nerve in his head was gone. He couldn't even have control of his feet or his limbs. And he was blind. And to make it double proof, I had a little lady to come pray for the sick first. Then turned back around and had Brother Toms to come pray. And we sitting here watching it develop. And then I went out and prayed for the sick and walked back. And she come just exactly according to the vision. And caught me by the arm and began weeping and said, Dr. Ackerman had sent them here. Dr. Ackerman is a bosom friend of mine, Catholic. His boy is a priest at the monastery at, um, at St. Minor and down in Indiana. And this man was from Jasper. And the Lord healed him out of that chair. He got up and walked. He could see as good as anybody else and walked out of the building, Norman Hole. All by a vision. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus that appeared to you in the way has sent me that I might lay my hands on you that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Then we find out seeing that we have this great salvation we should not we could not escape the penalties and wrath of God if we neglect such a great salvation. Now we're going to start reading tonight out and begin the fourth chapter of the book of Hebrews. If anybody wants to follow along, we got some Bibles here. If they want one, one of the ushers will bring it to you. If you hold up your hand, these, these Bibles, if one of the brethren here will uh, take, there's two Bibles laying there, I believe. And um, now we'll hurry because we have communion after a bit. And where we get done tonight, Wednesday night, we begin again. Now, I believe this morning in our reading, we begin on the 15th verse. Somebody maybe not know me putting on glasses to read by. I'm getting old. <laughs> and I can still read, but I can't pick it fast, especially when I've got fine reading here, fine print. And I went to have my eyes examined to see if I was really losing my sight. My eyes were 10 10. He said, But you're a past 40, son. <laughs> Amen. He had a thing for me to read. He said, start reading. I, I read it, and I kept getting closer. It got slower and slower, and it got about like this. I stopped. <laughs> then he put out there for 10, 10. I could read it anywhere. But he said what it is, when you pass 40, your eyeballs get flat. Now, I can squint my eyes and read just that close to me. But you have to squint. So he just made me a pair of a glasses. I can see it anywhere when it's real close to me. Now, when it gets off from me, you can't see it all with these things. But I read them, uh, read from this with the glasses. Now, this morning we had the last part of the third chapter of the Hebrews. And oh, what rich kernels we find. Now, listen, I ought to read again so we can get a background. Now, not talk on it, but just kind of go over it a little. While it is said today, if you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, them, they heard the word. When they had heard the word, did provoke. High be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. I end that this morning. We find that he said, don't harden your heart now. As in the days of provocation, that's when they provoke God. To anger, because that he had given to them Moses, his prophet, and a sign that was with Moses. How many of the class tonight knows what that sign was? Pillar of fire, Hebrews 13. Now, we don't know whether the congregation saw that sign or not, but Moses saw it. For Moses first met him in a burning bush. He was a fire. And the children of Israel obeyed Moses and left Egypt. And as soon as they come out of Egypt, God, we found, led them right into a trap. 
where Pharaoh's army behind them, the Red Sea on either side, and God put them to test, and they got scared, and it provoked God. He said, why do you cry at me? He said, just speak and go forward. Amen. I like that. Now they were following Moses as Moses followed the pillar of and cloud, and they were on their way to the promised land. Beautiful picture of the church tonight. On our way to the promised land, led by the same Spirit, same signs and wonders as God spoke of. Now, notice, then they come to the wilderness of sin. The, water, the waters were bitter, myrrh. Why did God lead him to bitter waters? Looks like he'd have led him to good water. But he led them to bitter waters so he could prove their faith. He likes to do it. Amen. He likes to let tribulation come on you. So he can show you his love and his power. How can people today who doesn't believe in the miracle working of God, when tribulations come, they just give up and go on? But we believe that God works miracles. Amen. He can't. God has listen to this. If God doesn't act the same when the same circumstances arise, then God's guilty of being partial to His people. God's sovereignty demands of him to work in every case like he did the first case or he was wrong when he worked in the first case. Amen. If God does not act in the same way he did on the first case, if he'll act different to the second case, then he acted wrong when he acted on the first case. If God healed the sick in the Old Testament, He's got to do it in the New Testament and today, or He did wrong when He healed them back there. He's got to act the same every time. And He will do it when the same faith meets the condition. The faults in us, not in God, for we see Him on some and many work great outstanding miracles. We know it the critic cannot say it's not so. For we see it, prove it. There it is. They used to say, show me a miracle. They can't say that no more. Science can't say it no more. We can absolutely prove to the scientific world and the scientific world has witnessed that a supernatural being in the form of a pillar of fire is with us. Here's this picture right here. And one hangs in Washington, D.C. tonight. It is the same Christ. Therefore, as a while, my ministering brother used to tell me, Oh, Brother Bram, that's the devil. Don't you fool with that. Had me scared. And I would not preach it until God came and revealed it that He's the same Jesus, the same one. Oh, then try to shake it out of me. Can't be done. For it's the Scripture. It's God's Word. It's not just an experience that's loose. It's an experience that's backed up by God's Word and God's eternal blessed promise. Now, we notice over here then that He said, For some, when they had heard, did provoke Certainly they got weary every time they get to a place where a, a showdown comes. Then what would they do? They would fly loose and get weary and want to turn back. And why did this happen to me? Strange thing. This morning after preaching that just as hard as I could, there was many came to the altar and questioned it. Why does this happen to me? You see how it goes? It goes over the top of the people's head. It's just the same people. Jesus said, you have eyes, but you can't see. He said that to the disciples. They said, lo, now thou speakest plainly. Now we believe. No man has to tell you anything, because God shows it to you. He said, do you now believe? 
after Amen. all this time. See, you mustn't question anything to God. Amen. For the footsteps of the righteous is ordered of the law. Amen. And every trial is put up on you to prove you. Amen. And the Bible said they're more precious to you than gold. Amen. So if God let a few light afflictions happen to you, remember it's for the correction of you. Amen. Every son that cometh to God must first be chastened of God and tried. Amen. Child trained. There's no exceptions. Every son that cometh. And these afflictions are done abroad, brought about to see what attitude you'll take. Amen. See, it's God on this proving ground. Amen. That's all earth is, is a proving ground. Amen. And where he's trying to prove you. Now listen as we go ahead and I want to get the last part of this. And to whom he swear that they should not enter into his rest. Now that's where we're coming to tonight. Into his rest. But to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. Amen. Now what is sin? Unbelief. God had come to him in a pillar of fire, sent his prophet, and anointed him, give him signs to do before the people. And then the pillar of fire by the prophet led them out. Every circumstance they come to, they begin to murmur and say every little fault they found with Moses, begin to chat and chatter against him. And God was displeased because he said they were sinning. Amen. They should have listened. But instead of that, they listened to reason. How can it be? How can these things be? If He's God, everything is possible. And He'll make all things work together for good to them that love Him. Now we're going into a great study here that is on the rest, the Sabbath. Now they were pilgrims. In their journey. See, they had been down in Egypt 400 years and in bondage. And now they were being brought out by the miracles of God according to His promise. And they were on their road to the promised land. And here a supernatural light appears in amongst them and begins to lead them. Now some of them would say, now look here. Who is this Moses? Who made you a ruler over us? Aren't you one of us? Who put you down here to be our boss? You think you know more than our pastor does? You think you know more than the priest does? You think you're, you're smarter than what our religious men are this day? That had nothing to do with it. It was God Amen. in the pillar of fire of vindicating Amen. that He was in the move. that not make a difference who was smart and who wasn't smart. It was the idea of following what God put before them. Well, Moses, as far as physical, done a foolish thing. When he tried to deliver the children by the Word of God, taking a bunch of people out of the wilderness, when he had his, well, he was an heir to everything they had. He had every army there was, and all the world whipped. And there he was, a great military general, and the next move is to be king Pharaoh of Egypt. Why, well, he could just have stepped up to the throne and said, All right, children, go on back to your home. That settles it. He was a Pharaoh. But Moses, oh, here it is. Moses, by faith, Amen. saw the promise of God. And the angel of the Lord come to him. Amen. And he know more about God in five minutes in the presence of that angel than he learned in 40 years with the teachers of Egypt. Amen. He know that he was. He seen the supernatural done. He said, I'll be with you, Moses. I'll go before you. And they understood. And he gave him signs to perform. Now, they were on their road to the land of rest. God had them a rest, a place where they wouldn't have to be test masters over them, to drive them, to make them do things. What a beautiful picture it is today 
when we look at the church and see the church in its condition, every man that's born to the Spirit of God despises the world. If you love the world or the things of the world, the love of God's not even in you. That's what the Bible said. And the real pilgrim on his road simply hates the things of the world. He hates to see man drinking. He hates to see man smoking. He hates to see women on the street with them little dirty clothes on. He hates to see bunkos and card parties and Yesterday, while Brother Tony or Brother Woods and I were coming through the street and some more, some of the men, there was a little lady there in Louisville coming down the street, lovely looking little woman, with a clothes on that was horrible, just a little way up on the hip and a little ribbon tied on her hips on each side, and a little bitty round piece of cloth in front of her and tied with a string behind, walking down the street horribly. And every man on the street looking at her. I said, she doesn't realize that she's guilty in the sight of God with committing adultery with every man that looked on her in that manner. And she'll answer at the day of judgment for committing adultery with those men. Jesus said, whosoever looketh them on woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already. That's right. So you see... Brother Wood said to me, what do you allow for that, Brother Branham? I said, it's either mental deficiency or devil possession. Amen. Amen. There's only two things to make it. A decent, clean woman won't wear those things Amen. unless she's devil possessed. It's exactly the truth. Now, a pilgrim that's on his road to heaven, he lives in a different atmosphere. You don't have to worry about him looking at her. He'll turn his head Amen. if he's got God in his heart. Amen. For he's living in an atmosphere that's a million miles from those things. Amen. That's right. You don't want to be guilty of that stuff at the judgment. So he turns his head and thank God have mercy on the woman. And on he goes. We're in our journey. Amen. We're on our way to Canaan's land. We're on our way to that eternal and blessful rest that God has given us. And in the journey, we're tempted. We're tempted of all kinds of things, but yet be tempted without sinning. Now, notice, as we go to the fourth chapter, let us therefore fear. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us to enter into His rest. I want you to remember that unless we find out, unless God has revealed it to us, no matter how much we go to church, that has nothing to do with it. God must come by revelation and reveal Himself to us that takes all the things of the world out. Now, what is said today, if you now let's start to the, the fourth chapter. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us to enter into His rest. Now remember, when they were on the road to rest, the pillar of fire led them. Now we want to find out what is this rest. Let us fear, lest the promise being left us to enter into His rest. Watch. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Now, here's the promise. Here's what we got to fear. If there's not a promise left us, but there is a promise. And then the next thing, don't come short of it. Amen. Now, the thought is, if we are on our way to the rest, what is the rest? Where is it? Is it joining church? Is it being uh, baptized a certain way? Is it uh, becoming a member of the greatest church in the city? Wearing better clothes? Is it education? Is it money so we can get work? Just lay down, rest the rest of our life as we call it? That's not it. Listen to what the Bible says it is and how we get it. 
Let us therefore fear lest the promise being left us to enter into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us, the day then, the gospel was preached as well as unto them. What is the gospel? The good news. The good news came to them in Egypt that God has sent a deliverer and is going to bring us out and take us to the promised land. The good news to us now that God has sent a deliverer, the Holy Ghost, and we're on the road to the promised land. Now, people have made it creeds and denominations, but God still remains at our rest as the Holy Ghost. Lois, gospel is preached unto them as well as unto us. But the word preached did not profit them. The, remember, the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Oh, my brethren, let me stop here for a minute. No matter how much the word is preached, how well you like the way it's been preached, unless you yourself are a partaker of that, it won't do you one bit of good. Not being mixed with faith by them that heard it. They seen the miracles of Moses. They said, that's pretty good. And they walked over and they, they seen him perform miracles and they seen the pillar of fire maybe or heard them talk about it. Oh, that's all right. But it wasn't mixed with personal faith. For as soon as they got to the wilderness, they everyone began to murmur. And God said, because if they doubted, it was sin. Amen. Don't doubt nothing. Amen. Believe. Amen. Don't doubt. No matter how hard the case is, believe it. Amen. Now they begin to murmur. And God overthrew them. And then he swore in his wrath that they should never enter into his rest. And the Bible said here, I believe it's in the... The third chapter, that their carcasses fell in the wilderness. The third chapter and the 17th verse. But with whom he was grieved for 40 years. Was it not with them that had sin, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And of all of them that come out of Egypt, only two went into the promised land. Out of the whole antediluvian world in the days gone by, there were eight souls saved out of billions. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, and but few there will be that will find it. Some people say, then, Brother Branham, what about all these thousands that the Bible said will appear there? Just remember how many has died in each generation has been Christians down to the age. They'll all resurrect. That makes up the body. Amen. You're expecting to be a hundred billion in this America come out or some other this world today. There might not be 50 come out. Amen. But Amen. the great ransom church is laying in the dust. Amen. Awaiting their God's jewels. Amen. That's resting in the dust. But their Amen. souls are under the altar of God. Amen. They're not in their right state. They're in a body truly. But Amen. a theostomy. And they cry out to God how long. They could see one another. But they couldn't shake each other's hands, that kind of a body. You meet your mother in glory tonight, if you should go, you couldn't shake her hand. Because she has not that kind of a hand. You couldn't feel it like you feel now. Because five senses is what's putting this body could have controlled. The presence of her would be felt in a different atmosphere. That's like a husband and wife. There'll be no marrying or giving in marriage in heaven. Why? Because there is a different kind of love. There's no sexual desire. All those things has passed away. You're cleansed and pure. But you never did live in that state. Therefore, you wasn't created for that state. You're just waiting there. But you're longing to come back. Amen. Where you was created a man and a woman and there God will raise that body out of the dust of the earth and glorify it. Amen. Then you'll see, taste, feel, smell, and hear, and associate. We'll never know. We can never enjoy an angel's life. We wasn't created angels. God created angels, but He created you and I, men and women. That's the state we'll be in forever at His blessed coming. Now, the other fell short because they sinned and come short of the glory. 
God showed them the pillar of fire. He showed them signs and wonders. He led them out. He brought them into temptation to try and prove them. Now, haven't you had a lot of temptations? Don't complain about them. Rejoice! God's with you. He's trying to prove your faith. Look at Job in the Old Testament. When he said, Have you considered my servant Job? A just man. A perfect man. There is none like him on the earth. Oh, he said, Sure, you got him heads up. Doesn't have any troubles. Doesn't have any wearies. He doesn't have any financial burdens. Everything's fine. He don't have any sickness, any pain. Let me have him. I'll make him curse you to your face. He said, He's in your hand. But don't you take his life. Oh, he done everything but take his life. But he couldn't move Job. Job, though he stood pat on the word. That's right. All the devils out of hell couldn't move him. For he knowed he had offered that sacrifice. He was just to accuse him. said, you sinned, Job, and God's to punish him. He knew that God hadn't, and he hadn't sinned before God. He knew that he was righteous, not because he was a good man, but because he was accepting the burnt offering in his stead. And tonight, we know that his life proved out that he was righteous. And when you're not trying to get home to glory because you try to help your neighbor, that's good. Not because you join church, that's good. But you get home to glory because you accept the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Nothing that you've done yourself. Now, as we read on, far unto us was the gospel preached, second verse, as well as to them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Faith wasn't in them that heard the word. Just think today. In the little humble ministry that the Lord has given me, there should be 40 million Americans saved tonight. You know what they say? What's well, mental telepathy? He's a mind reader. No such stuff. Well, he don't belong to our church. See, it's not no matter how much you lay it on the Word and prove that it's God's Word. It's God's promise. How much science will prove it that it's true. They will still can't believe. The Bible said they couldn't. said, then what's the use of preaching? God has to have a witness to condemn them at that day. The Word was preached and proved among them. And they still ignorantly walked away. And there's nothing left but judgment. God could not, just, could not justly judge a nation unless it had mercy before it had judgment. Amen. He's God. He couldn't do it. Now what do we say? For we which believe to have entered into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works was finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place on, on the seventh day, on this wise. Now, I do not want to hurt people's feelings against their religion. That's not my purpose. Out in the fields, I just preach the regular great evangelical fundamental doctrines. But in the tabernacle amongst my children here, I feel I have a right to preach what I think is doctrine and truth. See, I think that it's right. Now, I have thousands of good Sabbatarian friends of people who are Seventh-day Adventists. Some of the dearest friends that i got, some of them, are Seventh-day Adventists. Although the great move of the what's called the, prof, uh, uh, the uh, voice of prophecy, they're firmly against me. They said that I make the statement in the pulpit and said I was God. And that um, at this light that followed was an angel, and I was God, and I come to the world to do great things to prove people that I was God. Now, that's what the voice of prophecy said about me over in California. And ever who told that, you know, told something wasn't so. But in the first place, not taken up, thought against the Seventh-day Adventist church or any other Sabbatarian church, but only for the sake of the gospel. We're going to get down in a few minutes on Pentecost, too. Yeah, it's true. On Baptist, we're going to get down on that and show that God doesn't favor any denomination. That's right. He only favors the individual. And he doesn't deal with any denomination. He never did and he never will according to his word. 
but he deals with the individuals in every denomination. Yes, it's individuals God deals with. Now listen to this real clear. And if ever any time that question ever comes up to you, it'll be settled. Now may the Lord help us. Now closely. For the fourth verse. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. Now watch, he's talking about Sabbath. How many knows that the word S-A-B-B-A-T-H in the Hebrew, is the Hebrew word that means R-E-S-T? How many knows that in English? Amen. Sure. Don't Sabbath sound a funny word? It is. Don't sanctify sound a funny word? Sanctify is a Greek word. Sanctify means to be made holy. Amen. Hebrew means make holy. Greek means sanctify. English means make clean. Sabbath means a day of rest. That's what the old Sabbath was. A day of rest. When you see rest, it means Sabbath. Look it up in your original manuscript if you happen to have a Greek Bible. And find out if the word... If you've got a Scofield Bible, look at your Marge reading on rest and see if it don't run you back to Sabbath. Amen. Sabbath means rest. Amen. All right. Now watch. Let us therefore fear lest a promise be left to us to enter into his Sabbath. Rest. Amen. Now many people keep days. Like keep Sabbath day, Saturday. Others make a Sunday an idol, a worship day. And by the grace of God and by the God's word, God help me tonight, I can prove to you that they're both wrong. Both the Sunday worshiper and the Sabbath keeper. They are absolutely both wrong according to the Word. And after all, it's the Word that we have to go by. Amen. Not by what the Adventists say or not by what the Protestant says or the Catholic says. It's what the Bible says. Now, now watch. For he spake in a certain place on the seventh day, on this one. Now we're going to put up a something like this and call this the God's rest. The seventh day. Now watch. And God, listen to the scripture now. God did rest the seventh day from all His work. God had a Sabbath. And that seventh day was 1,000 years long. A type of the millennium. For he spake of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest from all his. His work. The personal pronoun. All his works he rested on the seventh day. That's God. And in this place, under the law, if they shall enter into my rest, God rested physically, for he had made the heavens and earth in six days, and on the seventh day he rested from all his work. He rested 1,000 years. For the Bible said that one day on earth is a thousand years in heaven. A thousand years in heaven is one day on the earth. How many of those the scripture says that in Second Peter? All right. God rested on the seventh day, and he spoke on this wise at a certain place. Now listen close. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God rested from all his works. And in this place again, the law, if they shall enter into my rest, he give the Jews on their way from the promised land, or from the Egypt to the promised land, the seventh day Sabbath. Now listen. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and to they whom it was first preached, the rest, God given the law, and the Sabbath was the fourth commandment, entered not in because of unbelief. Now watch, he's talking about the law. How they entered in wasn't mixed with faith. They didn't keep it. They kept the Sabbath in a memorial that they were going to a land of Sabbath to have everlasting rest Amen. from all their troubles and all their wearies. No more taskmasters. No more restless nights. They were on their way to the promised land of rest. Amen. 
It flowed with milk and honey. The grapes was so big that two men packed one bunch over their shoulders. Amen. Oh, what a land of blessed rest. Amen. But they failed to get it when they got there because of their unbelief. Amen. They were turned aside. At only 40 miles from where they left in Egypt to the promised land. And they were 40 years getting there because of their unbelief. Amen. God gave them their prophet, gave him his sign, gave him the pillar of fire, showed signs and wonders and preached the gospel to them. And they walked out after the fishes and loaves and fell in the wilderness and their carcasses perished in the wilderness. Jesus at the fountain he said, they said, our fathers eat man in the wilderness for 40 years. He said, I am that bread of life that come from God out of heaven. Amen. I am the bread of life. Moses didn't give you that bread. My father gave that bread. And I am the bread that comes from God out of heaven. If a man eats this, he'll never die. Amen. There's a difference. Now watch. They said, uh, he, they drank from the rock that was in the wilderness. For the space of so many years. He said, I am that rock. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. Amen. I am that rock. Amen. How could he be that rock? That rock was a spiritual rock. It followed the children of Israel. And Moses had a stick in his hand, which was the judgment rod of God. And God told him to smite the rock. And he smote the rock. And when he did, waters came from the rock. And Christ was that rock. Amen. And the judgment of God's penalty of sin was struck upon Him. Amen. God caused to lay on Him the iniquity of us all. Amen. And that iniquity bursted forth His heart. And from His heart poured the Holy Spirit like rivers of water Amen. to a perishing, dying Amen. people. Thank God. I am that rock that was in the wilderness. Why, he said, you mean to tell? He said, Moses, the one that told you that, he longed to see my day. And he saw it in portion. He said, now you mean to tell us that you're greater than Moses? That you've seen Moses? And Moses has been dead 800 years? He said, now we know that you got a devil. In other words, crazy. We know that you're crazy. He said, before Abraham was, I am. I was the great I am that was in the burning bush. I'm that fire that was in the burning bush. I'm that angel that went before them. And he said, I come from God. And I go back to God. And he came from God, made flesh and dwell among us, went back to that same pillar of fire. And here he is tonight. After 2,000 years, the same yesterday, today, and forever, doing the same thing. Leading His blessed children. And many are coming in because of unbelief. Now, He said He limited a day and day when God finished His work. Then He limited another day. And on this while, that if they shall hear, if they shall come, they keep the Sabbath. Go on through the new moons and so forth. That's where the Advent brethren tries to take you back. Now let's read on. Notice. Seeing therefore that some must enter therein, and them to whom it was preached first, enter not in because of unbelief. Now the seventh verse. Oh, I say the scripture is mathematically inspired. I say the scripture is uh, in an ever way inspired. The mathematics of the Bible are perfect. Did you notice this United States is number 13 in everything it does? You know it was established with 13 colonies? Amen. You know the flag had 13 stars in it first? Amen. You know everything that the United States does is in the number 13? Did you know it appears in the Bible in Revelation 13? It certainly does. The little beast, the lamb, have come up out of water. Not thickness and multitudes of people. Out, uh, not out of the water, but out of the land. Where there's no one. It had two little horns, civil and ecclesiastic powers. And it was a lamb, freedom of religion. And after a while, they went together and he spoke like the dragon. 
and exercise all the power that Rome did before him. That's coming to our nation. Amen. You mark it down. You watch to the Confederation of Churches of the Catholic unite together and watch what takes place. People who follow the pillar of fire will certainly have a rough time, but they're ready for the translation at that time. That's right. Just ready to go. For the Lamb overcome them, says the Bible. And them that followed Him because they were called the chosen and the faithful, the elected of God. Keep from getting on to that prophecy now so we can run this on. Listen close. The seventh chapter, the se- I mean the fourth chapter, the seventh verse. Seven is the number of completion. Three is the number of life. Seven is the number of completion. And this gives a complete Sabbath. And again, remember he spoke God on this wise. Then he spoke of the law on this wise. And then again he limited a third day. Third time. Again he limited a day. A certain day saying in David, Today, after so long a time, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Watch. If Jesus had given them rest, a Sabbath, would he not afterwards have spoken of another day? The dispensations change with Jesus Christ. From the law to grace. From works unto grace. From something you do to what something God did. Upon your own merits or upon His merits. It changed. When Moses come out of the wilderness with the law, he said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Keep the Sabbath day holy. When Jesus come out of the wilderness, when Moses come, the devil tempted him. As soon as the devil tempted him, he heeded to it. Moses had a weak spot. How many knows what it was? Temper. And as soon as he seen him worshiping the golden calf, he threw down the commandments and broke them, showing him that priesthood would be broken. And God gave them to him again. But when Jesus came out of the wilderness, 40 days of fasting, he was hungry, the only weak spot he had. And the devil come to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, Turn these stones into bread. Do a miracle here. Let me see you do it. And I'll believe you. Jesus said, It's written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He knowed he didn't meet Moses there. For he went to the Word. Took him up on the pinnacle temple, said, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. And quoted, not quoted, but quoted the Scripture. That it's written to give the angel charge concerning that same time the dash foot against the stone. He'll bury thee up. And Jesus went straight to the Word and rebuked him. Took him up on the mountain and showed him the United States and Germany and Switzerland and all the nations of the world that ever would be. Said, oh, they're all mine. I do them whatever I want to. No wonder we got wars and troubles. Said, I do them. No wonder women dress and get it by with it by the law. They're all government of the devil. That's what the Bible says. Satan said, they're mine. I do with them whatever I want to. <clears throat> said, if you'll worship me, I'll make you king like I am. Jesus said, it's written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, only shalt thou serve. Get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. Amen. Why? Jesus knew that he had fall heir to them in this great millennium. When his kingdom had come, thy will be done on Amen. earth as it is in heaven. Amen. There'll be no more sharks Amen. war. There'll be no more drinking. There'll be no more lust. There will be no more adultery. There will be no more death. There will be no more sorrow. He falls heir to every nation. They are His. That's right. They are His. And He will fall heir. But Satan has them for a space of time. That is the day that we're living. But He limited a day. Saying today after so long a time it's there to harden not your heart. For if Jesus would have given them rest, would it not have and spoke of another day? My Adventist brother, look at that. Paul here said, and Paul said in Galatians 1.8, if you're taking down the Scriptures, Galatians 1.8, if an angel from heaven comes and preach any other gospel besides this that I've preached, let him be accursed. Paul said if Jesus would have given them a rest day, well, look when he come off the mountain. He come down there. He'd overcome the devil. 
He was anointed, ready for his ministry. He said, you've heard him say them of old times, thou shalt not kill. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause is killed already. You've heard him say them of old times, this day, the Sabbath keepers. You've heard him say back under of old times under the law, thou shalt not commit adultery. Had to be in the act to be guilty. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Amen. Different. Passed right by that fourth commandment. But did he give him rest? Let's see what he said. David said, after so long a time, there will be a perfect rest come. Amen. God rested from his works on the seventh day. God blessed the Sabbath day and gave it to the Jews in the wilderness on this wise. They entered in because of unbelief, because the word not mixed with faith. And again, he limited a certain day, saying to David, after so long a time, hundreds of years after David was dead, the son of David would rise up with Jesus. And if they shall hear my voice, harden not your heart. God's going to speak to the heart. Now what? For the ninth verse now, you just read it. Jesus would have given them rest the eighth verse. He would have spoke of another day. If there was to be a Sabbath, if there was to be a Sunday keeping, then he would have spoke of it. If he said, now there's no more Sabbath, no more keeping the seventh day, well, I want you to keep Sunday. He would have said it. Paul said he would. He would have said, you all worship on Sunday. That will be the rest. Well, if he would wanted to keep the Sabbath, he said, just remain keeping the seventh day. But now I want you to keep Sunday the eighth day. No, he never said it. He said, if Jesus would have given them a day, would he not have spoke of it? Now, the ninth verse, get ready. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. A Sabbath keeping to the people of God. For he that has entered into his, Christ's rest, he also has ceased from his own works. Amen. As God did from His on the Sabbath. Amen. See it? Now let's take some scripture and back this up. Alright. When God made the world in six days, He rested on the seventh day and never worked anymore. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. He built the world, put the creation on it, and went to rest and never come back again to build any more worlds. He finished the works and went to rest. Now, on that after that thousand years, then sin come in. Then Christ was represented. The Lamb was represented. Now, the Jews was given this as a type of the seventh day rest. Now, he limited another day, saying in David, after so long a time, there's coming another rest. Now, what is that rest? Turn with me to Matthew, the 11th chapter. And the last part of the 11th chapter of St. Matthew's, that's when Jesus ended his sermon on the mount, and you'll see what he said. He said, Whosoever looketh upon a woman and lusts after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Whosoever anger with his brother without a cause has killed the brother. All these things. And he never touched that fourth commandment, that Sabbath. Now he's ending up. And the Sabbath is a great promise of God. It's a rest. Now, I want you, when he got through ending up the Beatitudes, here he says, 27th verse of the 11th chapter of St. Matthew, where he was teaching the Beatitudes in the 5th chapter. All things are delivered into my hand, uh, unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. See, you can't know one without knowing the other. Because he was the Father, manifested in flesh. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. Looks like people could see that and not argue. Certainly. God is not three people. If he's three gods, then we're heathens. Which one is God? They're all three one God. It's three offices of the same God. He was the Father in the form of the Holy Spirit in that pillar of fire in the wilderness. He was the Son when he used the Sonship office. A little while, the world says me no more. I'll go away. I'll come again and be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. See, he's the fatherhood, the sonship, and the Holy Ghost too. It's all the very same God Amen. working in three different offices. Fatherhood, sonship, Holy Ghost. 
Never. First John 5, 7 said, There are three that bear record in heaven. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. These three are one. Amen. Thomas said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, it'll satisfy you. He said, I've been so long with you and you don't know me. He said, when you see me, you've seen the Father. Amen. And why say, show us the Father? Now the oneness took it, the oneness group of people, and try to make Father, Son, Holy Ghost just one office in one place and like your finger one. That's wrong. God could not, Jesus could not have been his own father. If he was, then he was, uh, well, how could he have been his own father? And if God is a man separated from the Holy Ghost, he had two fathers. For the Bible said that the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary and she conceived. And the Bible said in Matthew 1, 18, that that thing which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then which is his father, the Holy Ghost or God? Both the same spirit, or he had an illegitimate birth, but two spirits. <laughs> That's a Catholic dogma, and it never was a Bible teaching. Martin Luther brought it out with a lot of other Catholicism. It's in Lutheran church. Wesley followed on with it, and it's still going on. But it's an error. It's not the truth. Never was it. Never was it a Bible doctrine. Never was it a commandment in the Bible. To teach three gods. There's one God. Jesus said, Hear you, O Israel, I'm the Lord your God, one God. Amen. Not three gods. Amen. And in Africa, they baptized once for the Father, and once for the Son, and once for the Holy Ghost. And then the poor Jew comes around and says, Which one of them is your God? Which one is the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? They're all three one. The Bible said they were one. Amen. Jesus was a house that God lived in. Amen. The Bible said that at well, 1 Timothy 3.16, without controversy, that's argument. Great is the mystery of God, for God was manifested in the flesh, seen of angels, received on, and preached, believed on, and received up in the glory. God was. The Bible said His name shall be called Emmanuel, which is by interpretation, God with us. The Bible said that Jesus in Him dwelt the fullness Amen. of the Godhead bodily, Amen. as we had it the other night. God in the beginning was spirit. And then from God went out the Logos, or the Theosophy, which was a form of a man called the Son of God, prefigured. He came in earth in a body of flesh even before he came in Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I'll swallow that one once, brother. I'll prove it to you. When, a when Moses saw him, he said, let me see your form, Lord. And God hit him in a rock. And when he passed by, he said it was the back part of a man. That was that theostomy. It's exactly. Then that theostomy had to be made flesh. Not another person, but the same person. Had to become flesh to take the sting out of death. Like a bee when he stings, it leaves a stinger. And he never left that. He could put a sting in human flesh because it's sin. But brother, when he stung that Emmanuel's flesh, he lost his stinger. Amen. Yes, sir, he can buzz, but he ain't got no stinger no more. No wonder Paul, when they go to chop his head off, said, Oh, death, where is your sting? You can buzz and hum as much as you want to. Grave, where is your victory? But thanks be to God who gives us a victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. There you are. It taken God himself to do that. He came and was manifested in flesh. He returned back into spirit. You said, Brother Bram, you've never told us yet when God was made flesh before he came in Christ. When Abraham was sitting under his tent one day... There come two angels and God walking up to him in human flesh. Amen. They had dust on their clothes and were weary. And they sat down and Abraham went out and took the calf away from a cow and killed it and made some lamb chops. Went out and got, had Sarah take some cornmeal and sift it and make some whole cakes and got some butter from the cow and got some buttermilk and took it out there and set it down and God eat it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the reason my faith looks up to thee. Amen. Thou Lamb of Calvary. Hallelujah. You think that's a big thing for God? God who made all the potash and calciums and everything in the world. Amen. He come Amen. down to visit Abraham. He said, you think I'll keep it from you? Seeing that you're the heir of the world? Amen. Amen. I'll not keep it from you. God just got a... We're made out of 16 elements. He just got some potash and some calcium, some petroleum, cosmic light. To, step in that gable. A body. Step in that wormwood. 
He stepped in it. Two angels out of heaven. God reached out a handful of stepped in it himself. Come down, he was hungry. Blessed. What about that Adventist brother that won't eat meat? We're going to get into that at you, huh? God Almighty Jehovah. Find out if that same name isn't translated the same one at the burning bush. Hallelujah. And when he stood on earth, he said before Abraham was, I am. That same one at the burning bush. Hallelujah. Shrine. Elohim. See if it isn't the same. He was the one at the burning bush. He was the one here in the presence of Abraham in a body of flesh. That eat the calf and drink the milk from the cow and eat butter on whole cakes. Blessed be the holy name of God. Amen. Walked right down there and said, I'll not leave you. Amen. And he had his back turned. He said, Abraham, I'm going to visit you. And you're going to bring that child. You're 100 years old now and Sarah's 90. And Sarah in the tent went, laugh. He said, what made Sarah laugh? Behind him. Amen. The tent between them. Abraham said, Sarah, did you laugh? No, I never said, yes, you did. <laughs> what kind of a telepathy is that? What kind of a mind reading was that? He does the same today. Amen. He's Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Amen. the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. He never fails. Look at him. There he stands. Walked right out and talked to Abraham and vanished in his sight. And the great patriarch Abraham said he talked face to face with God. Amen. Elohim, the same God. Get it? Not no three people, brother. Three offices of the same person. In the beginning was the same. He was that great spirit fountain where all the trueness, all the love, all the peace, everything that was pure was in this fountain. It began to form a body, a theostomy, the kind of body that we go to. Not a glorified body, but an angelic body like. Has shape, form. Every time I see a tree, I think, that tree is a negative. There's a positive somewhere. That tree was made off of something and intelligence made it. And all this earth does is reflect the heavenly. The Bible said so. And if there's a tree here that has to perish, there's one in glory that won't perish. If I see a man, I see a lovely little young couple, a man and his wife walking down the street, sweethearts together, what does it reflect? Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's one in heaven. That'll never perish. If this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have one already waiting. The theosophy. Then you get the Trinity. The great spirit dwelling in the Son, Jesus. Jesus dwelling into the church. At that day, you'll know that I'm in the Father, the Father in me, and I in you. That God was, He poured into Jesus. All Jesus was, He poured into the church. Amen. There you are. I am the Father, the Father in me. I and you and you and me. There's a, there's a body. That's what's the matter with the church. They've been taught little old petty, sissified old lady doctrine of some Amen. sort. Run around and have soup suppers and card parties. No wonder we got a bunch of chaos that we got. We don't need children's programs and little soup suppers. What we need is a rugged old gospel and man of faith with the sword hanging out there and challenging. Praise God. What we need today, not some petty theology and some theory of some man-made clique. We need a rugged gospel preached in the light and the power and demonstration Amen. of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Notice here now, as he said, he limited another day, saying to David, if Jesus would have given them rest, we'd not have spoken of another day. But there remaineth the rest of the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Now, where are we go to read? Matthew, the, 20, the 11th chapter, 27th verse. All things that the Father delivered unto me, or delivered unto me of my Father, rather. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. All right, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. See, it's not how much you learn, how much the, the bishop wants you to know, it's how much God wants you to know. Amen. If you can't see this revelation, don't ask the bishop, ask God. Amen. Don't ask your pastor, ask God. Amen. 
the Son reveals him. He, personal pronoun. Listen, this will shock you. Here's the commandment. Paul said if he'd have left another day, he'd have spoke of it. But here's what he said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you Sabbath. Amen. Rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find Sabbath unto your soul. Amen. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Watch what Paul said. If Jesus would have given them rest, he would have spoken another day. But he limited a day, saying, David, after so long a time, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And there remaineth, listen now, ninth verse, there remaineth therefore a rest, a Sabbath, to the people of God. For he, the man or woman, that has entered into his rest, come unto me all your labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest has ceased from his works as God did from his. Amen. You might have been 20 years old. You might have been 30 years old. You might have been 50 years old. But the minute that you hear the voice of God knocking at your heart, don't harden it. Then enter, he that heareth my words, believeth on him that sent me, has everlasting eternal life and shall never come into condemnation but pass from death unto life. Say, Brother Benham, what happens? You get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Christ comes into you. Is that right? Turn with me to Isaiah, the 28th chapter. And let's Amen. read. Isaiah, the 28th chapter. See what the prophet said about it. Amen. Matthew 28, begin at the 8th verse. Here's the predicament of the last days. We've got to close in a minute. For all tables will be full of vomit, and there is no place clean. Let me stop a minute. As Ernie said the other night, he was talking to somebody, Ernie Fandler, this brother here from Switzerland. He said, I stopped and let it soak in. I want this to soak in. There is no place clean for all the tables will be full of vomit. As a dog goes to its vomit and a sow to her water, so does the people turn back. What's the matter with you, Methodists? You used to have the light. Yes, amen. What happened? God took it out of your hand and gave it to the Nazarenes. What happened to you, Nazarenes? You once had the light. God took it out of your hands and gave it to the Pentecostals. Amen. Correct. You church of God and the rest of you, holiness people, because you rejected the light, you denominated yourself and said, we won't believe any more than this. God moved out on out and showed you he had people who would follow him. Yeah. What happened to you Pentecostals? You had the light. God's took it away from you. The pillar of fire moves on. Every time the pillar of fire moved, the church moved with it. Yeah. And when Luther organized out of the Catholic church, his own church, the pillar of fire moved and Wesley went with it. Wesley organized and made his denomination and the pillar of fire moved and the Nazarenes went with it. The Nazarenes organized and the church of God went with it and said there wasn't a denomination, but there were. Amen. Then what happened? The next thing happened, the Pentecostals seen the fire and away they went. And what did you do? Made a doctrine out of tongues Amen. and organized that everybody had to speak in tongues before they got the Holy Ghost and God moved right away and left you sitting where you're at. What happened to you oneness? You found baptism in Jesus' name. You made a doctrine out of it and separated yourself from the rest of it and God moved right away and left you sitting there. Right. What happened to you assembly of God, old general counsel? You made an organization out of yours and God moved right away and left you sitting. Now you're nothing but a cold farm a bunch like the rest of them are. And the pillar of fire moves on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All tables are full of vomit. Look at the Lord's Supper. Why, they even eyes a place, they take old loaf bread. And the bread is supposed to be made with unleavened bread. And they pass it out to sinners, cigarette smokers, prostitutes, harlots, as long as they got their name on the book. And the Baptists even call it closed communion. That's right. Oh. Now, you Baptists crow a little. God will take your horn off. That's exactly right. You won't be able to toot it. 
post-communion. You separate yourself, see to be holier than thou art. Remember, this is the Baptist tabernacle. Well, that's what you get. You organize yourself. Oh, you say, we're not an organization. Yes, you are. Certainly you are. You say, we're a fellowship. Yeah, anybody comes in and do- I'll teach just the way you believe it. It's all right. But one, you, you won't throw him out, but you're excommunicating from your brotherhood. It's exactly right. Oh, you got a way of doing it. So has God got a way of doing it. But God's church will move on. The purifier won't stand for that. All tables are full of vomit. Now listen. Now this is going to shock you just a minute. Listen, I read the word. Who is this? The prophet Isaiah. All tables are full of vomit. So there is nothing clean. Just dog eat dog. Come to the church. Women, shot, bob off their hair, wear shorts, get out and see the man coming down the street. Long over your heart. Little girls want to hear somebody give that uh, bulldog or wolf whistle, whatever it is. You know, whoosh, whoosh. Oh, you think you're cute, don't you? And you men walk down the street with a cigar in your mouth and a deacon on the board. You look like a dehorned Texas steer. And then you think that you're somebody. That's exactly right. No wonder all tables walk up and take the communion and act like you're somebody and cheat and steal an eye through the week. What's the matter with you? All tables are full of violence. Oh, I'll take the Lord's Supper. Sure, we do it in our church. Jesus said he would raise us up in the last days if we took the Lord's Supper. But he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are sick and weakly among you, and many are dead. Old dead formal churches. The Spirit of God's gone out of you. The pillar of fire ain't there no more. You deny divine healing. You deny the resurrection. Oh, you say, oh, he rose from the dead historically. Well, what about him being the same today if he rose from the dead? You say, oh, that ain't so. Ah, there you are. You have the resurrection the way you want it, and God's got it the way he wants it. Amen. But the thing of it is, the Bible said, what we know is the truth, that he would confirm the word, and these things that I do shall you do, same, and I'll be with you always to the end of the world. Amen. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday and forever. That's what the word said. Now, what's the Sabbath? All tables are full of vomit. No one can Who shall he teach knowledge? Not worldly knowledge. Spiritual knowledge. Who shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make understand doctrine? Oh, bless God, our organization don't believe this. They wouldn't put up with that. Don't care what your organization believes. What does God's Word say about it? Oh, well, our pastors are educated. Oh, sure. Certainly, got so much education, they left God out of it. Amen. Truly. For you can tell them the word and they'll walk around and say, Well, I don't believe it just that way. Right. Oh, you sissified thing. Let me tell you. <laughs> Look here. Who shall he make known doctrine? Them that are weaned from the breast. And them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. The other day, a neighbor of mine came and said, Billy, a certain pastor here in the city, most lovely little person you ever seen. Said wife and I were sitting with her pajamas on about midnight, and that little pastor run in and he, he, he drank some coffee with us, and he tucked out over to the other neighbor's house, and he shook hands with them. They was having a little card game, and he sat down and played cards with them. So oh, he is the most sociable little feller you ever seen. So oh, we love him. We wouldn't get rid of him for nothing. I stood there a little bit. I thought, well, so oh, don't you think that every church needs a man like that? <laughs> I couldn't answer that. He said in another little place that they had such a lovely place, this minister and his wife, lovely people, went out and deal with the children so much till they had a, a Bible school and said they just had so many they just overflowed the thing with little children. Said, my, he can tell all kinds of little stories of the little children. I said, that's nice. That's awful nice. I went back. I just come from Canada and I thought, here I am. My, people, uh, oh, what's the matter with me? I don't do that. I went washing on my car. I thought, God, I'm going to be an old man. And here I am. I fought, I cried, I begged. And anything I get is a big blaspheme. Anything I get somebody say something bad about you, oh, the old holy roller, something like that. I thought about that, and a voice come to me, said, that man's all right if they're doing that, but I never called you to do that. I called you to take the sword and stand there like Joshua and challenge, brother! Not fool around with some old society or some church organization, but challenge the devil. Stand in the forefront. 
Make right, right, and wrong, wrong. Amen. Preach the word and find Amen. out who's got the faith Amen. to believe it. Lay it out there. Amen. I got to speeding up on that car all the time, boys. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Felt good then. It's all right, Lord. I'll grip her a little tighter. Now I want to die with it in my hand. Amen. Who can I make known doctrine? Listen. Tables are full of about them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the bread. Now watch. For precept, as that upon, upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and with other tongues will I speak to this people, to whom it is said, This is the Sabbath, wherein ye shall cause the weary to rest. This is the refreshments. Yet they would not hear, for the word of the Lord came unto them. Somebody preached it. Precept upon precept upon precept, line upon line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Amen. What is the rest? When did the rest come? When people spoke with other tongues and had stammered lips. Stammered lips, they didn't speak nothing. They stammered. When did that happen? On the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost come. That is the rest, the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you weary and heavy lady, and I'll give you rest. I'll give you life, eternal life. Zoe, God's own life. God will come into you and be a part of you. He'll give you a birth and make you a son and daughter. Now, watch that. It was a third rest to give. The first, God received it from His Word. Second, Israel received it in the law. Third, the church received it as a part of God. Three is the number of life. How many knows that? Every time you see three, it's life. Notice, when God created the earth, on the third day was life. How many knows that? The third day there came life on the third day of creation. The Trinity, the Father, was above the people in a pillar of fire. The Son was a man who talked to people and got them ready. The Holy Ghost was the third step, which was the Holy Ghost God in the people. Life, Father, Son, the rest of God the rest of Israel, and the rest of the church. Amen. The Sabbath keeping. So if you've never received the Holy Ghost yet, you have never entered into God's rest. Amen. You don't have to say, oh, I, could, I want to smoke. <laughs> I, I just couldn't do it. I'm a Christian. I really don't want to drink, but I, I'm a Christian. I just can't, don't want to drink, but yet I like to. If you lust after women, if you do all these ungodly things, you've never hit that rest period yet. You've never entered into your rest. And when you enter into this rest, you cease from your own worldly works like God did from His. Why, you're part of God. You rest eternally. There you are. That's the Sabbath. Come unto me, all your labor. Today He limited a certain day. After so long a time in David, when you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Just a word or two more here now. We just fold. For he that has entered into... Christ rest, come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden. You have ceased from your own works as God did from His on the seventh day. Yours might have been the 30th year, the 40th year, the 5th year. Whatever it is, you have ceased from your works as God did from His eternally. You no more want the things of the world. The world's dead to you. Now, 11th verse now, closely. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Not this one, not this one, but this one. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. What is it? The pillar of fire is here. The angel of the Lord is with us. He's doing the very same things that he said he would do. And people stumble around saying, Oh, well, I guess it's all right. That's pretty good. Oh, I guess it's okay. Be careful that you don't fall in the same snare of unbelief. You take it with all your heart. Watch. For the Word of God, not the doctrine of the church. The Word of God is quicker 
more powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. Listen, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul, the spirit, the joints, and the marrow. And listen, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. What was that? The Holy Spirit can come and say, you did a certain, certain thing. And you did this and did that. You had this kind of disease and that. If you'll make this right, you'll do that. See? Discerner of the thoughts. And people say, what is that? Why, it's mental telepathy. Why, it's a, he's a fortune teller. See what I mean? It's a wicked old adulterous world that don't know God. It's quicker, thoughter, more powerful than a two-edged sword and a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Now, what is it that knows the intents of the heart? God. You said, well, the Bible said the Word of God. The Word of God is God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. God discerns the thoughts. Abraham had his back turned and, and so did God had his back turned to the tent and Sarah laughed and God turned around and said, what made Sarah laugh? A discerner of the thoughts of the heart. I want that to soak a little bit. Then when that kind of a ministry raises up that God promised in the last days, what happened? It's mental telepathy. Did not they call the Lord himself Beelzebub? He said if they call the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call his disciples? I love you. It goes to show that you're interested enough. You don't have to come to an air-conditioned building to hear the gospel. You're hungry enough to come to a place like this. God never would let us build nothing but this. We love it this way. It's just a little shack, but that's the way we love it. God don't dwell in glamour. God dwells in humility. We love it like this. We're happy to come, and you are too, to sit in a, a place like this. No matter how hot it is, how much you sweat on your new suit, your new dress, that don't make any difference. You're listening to eternal life. Amen. To the Amen. Word of God that knows the thoughts of your heart. Amen. The pillar of fire that hung over the children of Israel. Amen. Hangs here tonight. Amen. I could challenge it. There isn't a man who could stand here under the power of the Holy Ghost without God spilling him right out and telling him what he was. Amen. Right. There you are. What is it? What is it? It's the same Spirit. That led the children of Israel to the rest and they fell because of unbelief. Don't you fall. This is the last chance. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Life come through there. Justification. Martin Luther. Still a form of religion. Sanctification. Martin Luther and John Wesley. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Life. Justification is believing. Sanctification is a cleansing. Holy Ghost is a filling. Life! Not through the Lutheran age, they had it in the farm. Not through the Wesley age, they had it in the farm. But this is the age when the Holy Ghost comes Himself. And if you haven't received it, how do you, can you believe miracles? It takes God in you to believe. You act like God. You know like God. You think like God. The Bible said that you are amateur little gods. Jesus said so. For you're a part of God. Just the same as I'm a little Branham. And you're a little whoever you are. It's because your parents is that name. The nature that you are is because your parents is that way. Oh, you was born of them. And the reason that you believe God and believe in miracles and signs and wonders is because you're sons and daughters of God. Amen. You receive life. Life comes on the third. All right. When Jesus went up on the mountain, everywhere he went, he would take Peter, James, and John. Three witnesses. Three is the number of life. Get it? Love. Joy. Peace. Now, let's go quickly now to the end of the chapter. Quickly as we read. For the Word of God is quicker, more powerful than a two-edged sword, and discerning even the intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in His sight. But all things are open Unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Brother, there's not a fly I could light on the post there without him knowing it. All things are open. 
Brother, he knows everything that you ever did, ever thought you ever thought of. That's what he is. We bleed him like that. And when God comes into us and sets us in the church, he puts gifts and things in the church to operate his being. If God is that infant God, then he heals the sick. He can raise the dead. He can cleanse the lepers, make the blind to see. He can give visions. He can do all kinds of these things, working through his church because it's God in you. There's the church. How does that church become a church? By joining it? No, sir. By shaking hands? No, sir. By water baptism? No, sir. By membership? No, sir. How do you get it? For by one Spirit, we are all baptized into one body. There you are. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. No worldly condemnation. They can't accuse you of nothing. There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. There you are. That's how to judge your Christianity. That's how to know you've entered into that rest. The world don't bother you no more. Certainly, you sit, walk away from it. You've got something better to think of. There you are. No condemnation. That's how we get into the body. And you're secured forever. The Bible said so. Look over here in Hebrews, the 10th chapter. It said, For were these offerings of bulls and sacrifice and remembrance is made of sin every year. But this man, through one sacrifice, blessed be his holy name, for by one sacrifice he has perfected forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Not for the next revival, but forever. Amen. Old things have passed away and all things have become Amen. new. We're walking in the light, the beautiful light. The birds sing different. Amen. Sitting here looking at this little alcoholic. About five years ago, I guess, Rosella, a wall-eyed bat walking down the streets of Chicago, drunk, twisting around, walking in every kind of sin that there was, drunk in everything that she could be. And one night the Holy Spirit, that's quicker than more powerful than a two-eight sword, said, Woman, you are an alcoholic. Hallelujah. If that ain't the same God that was back at her who knowed Sarah laughed behind him, I don't know what he is. Amen. Up in the audience to another little woman she went and got and brought in there, said, You are a dope addict. How he deserves the thoughts of the mind. And great big aristocratic Minister sitting there who has worldwide evangelism with their hands folded back in t-shirts thought we didn't know them. Like they could sit under a meeting like that and God wouldn't reveal who they were. Amen. Sitting there looking different. Like they were somebody else. The Holy Ghost knew who they was. And they sat there in their hearts thought it was mental telepathy. No more about God than a hot and tight we know about Egyptian night. That's right. They know it by letter but not by spirit. The letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. That's it. That's the idea. Quicker, more powerful than a two-edged sword, a discerner of the thoughts of the heart. Listen. Watch. Neither is there any creature that is not manifested in his sight. But all things are naked and open before his eyes. To him who we have to do with, seeing then that we have a great high priest. Listen now to the sick. That has passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Hold fast. That don't mean just keep testifying. If you don't live the life, you don't hold it fast. You're living a hypocritical thing. You're, you better be going out and say you're a sinner and forget about it. Don't profess a Christian lives something else. You're the biggest stumbling block the world's ever had. If you're a sinner, admit it and go on and get right with God. If you're a Christian, hold fast your confession. Stay there. Watch this now. I want to get this in just before we leave. For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Listen. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, 
that we might obtain mercy and find grace and help in the time of need. Blessed be the name of God. Amen. Amen. Listen, Baptist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, you're going to ask me this question. Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. I know that's where you always go. That's true. What more can a man do but believe God? That's exactly right. That's all he can do. But when God recognizes that faith, he gives you the Holy Ghost. Now what do I do, Brother Branham? Do I shout? Not necessary. Do I speak with tongues? Not necessary. You can shout and speak with tongues both and still live like a, like a heathen. Still lust for women. You can still smoke and drink and everything else. I've seen people speak with tongues and go right out and pull some of the dirtiest, crookedest deal I've ever seen. I've seen them shout and cry crocodile tears and would steal a, anything you get a hold of. I've seen them walk out and every girl goes down the street and turns. <laughs> That's one good sign you haven't got it. That's right. But brother, when you pass from death unto life, all those things become dead. And you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. If you see something wrong, you'll pray for it. God be merciful. And if you see troubles, instead of going tattling and trying to make it worse, you'll try to get to the person and straighten it up and quieten it right quick. That's the Spirit of God in you. If you make a mistake, you're subject to them. If you make a mistake, you'll correct it. Right quick, don't let the sun go down on your ass. That's how you know you're passing death and life. You got love. Peace, joy, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, patience. We have a high priest sitting in heaven, ready to make intercessions upon our profession. What is it? It's when Jesus went back to the Logos, the pillar of fire that led the children of Israel, sitting in the presence of them, great fountain, rainbow of light to come out, the seven perfect spirits, a perfect spirit of love. Now watch. The first is a perfect love. That's God's love, pure, unadulterated. The next comes in there is... Uh, Filial love. That's love that you have for your wife and your children. The next drop said to that is lustful love. The next is ungodly love. And it just goes on down until it's filth. Just keep on perverting, perverting. And everything that had a beginning has an end. And all that will be taken right away and no members of it all and come right back to the perfect someday. And the only way you can stop down here halfway of the way and get up here, you've got to be all the way in. Amen. Trusting, resting completely in the salvation that Jesus Christ gives to you by faith. Amen. There's a spirit of honesty that comes from God. That's the fountain. Fountain of God. That's honesty. The next is a man who will do a good deed for his neighbor. The next is a guy you have to watch him. The next is a guy who's a thief. The next is a guy who's a murderer. Hold up. See that perverse right on down? But all them things speak of a real. That's what I say every time you see a person that's you see a little couple walking down the street, sweethearts, maybe they're 80 years old. It only speaks that in heaven, there's a young couple that represent them. In heaven. If this earthly tabernacle is dissolved, we have one there. If you see a man that's cheating, stealing, lying, just remember his part's waiting in hell for him. His place where he'll be tormented in the presence of God and the holy angel with fire and brimstone. He'll be tormented there. Not forever. He can't be tormented forever. Forever don't mean all, all, all times. Eternity is forever. Eternity is, has no beginning or end. But forever is a space of time. The Bible said forever and conjunction forever. Jonah said he is in the belly of the whale forever. It's a space of time. But look, there's only one eternal life. And that's God. And if you're going to be tormented forever and can never die, you've got eternal life. You can't be tormented forever. You may be tormented for a hundred million years in the presence of God and the holy angel with fire and brimstone. I don't know how long it's designated, but it's finally got to come to an end because it had a beginning. Amen. And God alone has eternal life. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me doesn't have forever life. He has eternal life. Amen. That life that began, not nothing along here, but all the way up there, eternal life. Zoe, God's own life, comes down and dwells in the man, and he's eternal with God and can't die. That's what the Word says. Just think of it. Is there two eternal lives? You couldn't answer that, could you? There's one eternal life. 
Now, that's the life of God. This other kind of life, no matter what it is, it's got an end to it. And anything that had a beginning has an end. But anything that had no beginning has no end. And God said He would give us eternal life without beginning. We were just made a part of Him. And actually the life that's in us wasn't brought here by human nature. Nature gave us the Spirit, but that Spirit died and we got the Spirit of God. Amen. Glory to God. Was God a man? Certainly. Let us make man in our own image. What was God? A theosophy, a body. And there God, man was made like that and put over the garden. But there was no man to till the soil in the senses. Then he created man out of the dust of earth and an animal life. And that man tilled the soil and the man fell by transgression. Correctly. And God, the theosophy, come down and was made flesh and dwelt among us to redeem the man. Amen. Amen. So it's nothing you could do. You're a sinner to start with. You're shaped in iniquity. You're born in sin. Come to the world speaking lies. You were born here in this world by a sexual desire of your father and mother. And you're just as hell bound as you can be. I don't care what you do. You might never lie, steal, keep every commandment and everything else. And you'll go to hell like a martin to its box. But the only way that you ever can live again is to accept the Holy Spirit, God's eternal life. What made you what you are? In the beginning, when the Holy Ghost brewed over the earth, it wasn't nothing but volcanic eruption. A little Easter flower come up. God said, that looks pretty. Just keep brooding. Flowers come up. Grass come up. Trees come up. Birds flew out of the dust. Animals come up. A man come up. Now, how was it done? By the brooding of the Holy Spirit. Bringing these materials together. Potash, calcium. Making the flowers. Making an animal. Making you. And now, you've got a free choice. God broods back to you and says, Hear my voice? Harden not your heart like in the days of provocation. Here he comes down, preaches the word. The gospel preached unto them was not, didn't have faith in it, so it didn't do them no good. They heard it, but they didn't believe it. God come down and showed them a pillar of fire, showed by his prophets signs and wonders he is with him. They didn't believe it. Oh, they like to see the miracles. They like to hear the prophet. But as far as believing it, they didn't. Their lies proves they didn't. Now I said, don't you fall at that same example of unbelief. For in this last days to the Gentile church, God has appeared again. Amen. Same sign, same wonder, same pillar of fire, vindicated, proven. Let us not harden our hearts and fall in that temptation back under of unbelief. For we'll rot on earth and that'll be all of it. And when the Holy Spirit knocks at your heart, after so long a time, when you hear my voice harden out your heart, say, child of mine, this is the truth. Don't look at the messenger. Listen to the message. Believe it. Harden not your heart as in the days of provocation. When he hears your voice, harden not your heart. Then you say, yes, Lord, I believe. Then you enter into life. The Holy Spirit comes into you. Your old spirit dies out. It makes you lust and hate and malice and enmity and, and hatred and all that things dies away. And you become full of love, joy, peace, resting. No matter how the winds blow, it's all right. My anchor holds within the veil. Amen. To every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. For on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other grounds the same sand. Amen. There you are. Eddie Pruitt, as he wrote that famous song, all other grounds, all denominations, all creeds, all doctrines fade away. Christ. You say, well, I know the Bible. You don't have life for knowing the Bible. I know my catechism. You don't have life for knowing your catechism. Well, I'm a Christian. You don't have life by professing Christianity. You have life by knowing Him. Amen. Knowing Him, you have life. Then you enter into His rest. You cease from your works as God did from His. You are made a son of God, a partaker of God. And if that, if that Holy Spirit woos to you, and you woo back, say, Yes, Lord, or coos. Who? Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And you say... Ah, I'm young. I got all oh, my pastor don't pray. All oh, I got to do, see, you'll never find it. But when you say, Yes, my Lord, I hear your voice. I don't harden my heart. I don't care, Lord. It's your word and I believe you. Take me, Jesus, just as I am, without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me, and that I promise I'll believe, O oh, Lamb of God, I come. Lay your hands upon his dying head. 
Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And you've called me. All the Father has given me will come to me. And I'll raise him up at the last day. Yes, Lord, I come. I harden out my heart as they did in provocation. I truly believe. And what does he do? He gives you his life. Zoe. Eternal life. And if God could raise us from the dust of the earth, where we come from. Did we come from the dust? Everything you see come from the dust. And if God could make me what I am today without having any choice, just because his desire was to make me, and give me the opportunity to face Calvary and make my decision, and I made my decision and believed on him, how much more will he raise me up? If he made me what I am without a choice, then I took a choice and took it in when he laid his hands by himself and swore by himself that he'd raise me up in the last day. I rest assured. I have rest. Not because I worship on Sunday. Not because I worship on the Sabbath. That has nothing to do with it. I worship because I've entered into his peace and rest. Peace. Rest. Love. Joy. Let the storm slide. My anchor holds. Have you got that experience tonight, friend of mine, to sit here in this hot tabernacle? You didn't come to hear me. No, you come to hear the Word. Listen, my friend. Now, if you haven't got that rest, you can find it right now. You don't have to come up here at the altar. Sit right where you are. Be sincere. and Say, Christ, just speak to my heart. I know it's hot. I'm, I'm just all lathering sweaty. I'm awful. But Lord, truly, I may be sweating with pain worse than this before morning. And the doctor may shake his head and say, it's a heart attack. He's gone. Then what? What then? When the great book is open, what then? You heard that song, what then? When the ones that's rejected the message will be asked to give a reason, what then? What then? Think of it now real deeply. While we bow our heads. Thank you. When the one that's rejecting this message tonight going to be asked to give a reason what then? What then? What then? When the great book is open, what then? When the ones that's rejecting this message tonight, you're going to be asked to give a reason. What then? My Heavenly Father, this is all in your hands now. Here's the true Sabbath laying before the people. Amen. Here's the angel of God for the last few years has blasted around the world. Critics and everything else has tried to condemn it. But every time you prove yourself to be God. The scientific world, the church world, are they blind, Lord? Maybe there's one in here tonight would like to receive their sight. To walk on and not tempt God as in the days of provocation. Not try to tempt Him to be good on Sunday or keep a certain day or to a certain creed or to belong to a certain church. But would like to come out and be circumcised by the heart and receive the Holy Spirit. And they want Him by faith now. They're trying to accept Him into their heart. They're trying to find grace with you, Lord. Oh, they may have spoken tongues. They might have shouted. They still got the same old temper. They still got the same old malice. They still tattle and talk and do things they shouldn't do. They don't want that, Lord. What then? When that great book is open that said such won't enter the kingdom. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Anything short will not go in. Are they wholly trusting tonight in the crucified? If not, Lord, may they make that one eternal yes just now. Say, Lord, I no emotion, but I just feel something down in my heart. Amen. That something's telling me I can do it right now by your grace. Amen. And I'm now accepting you as my personal Savior. I'm 
I'm rejecting all the things of the world, and I want to enter your rest, and I believe I'm doing it right now. Amen. I believe the Holy Spirit is bringing me right into that place. While ever heads bowed, does anybody feel that way just now? Raise your hand. The Holy Spirit is now bringing me into a place where I won't tattle anymore. God bless you. I won't do the things. My temper's gone. I can live in peace and joy and long-suffering. From right now, I believe God's is speaking to me right now, and I can do it from this hour on by His grace. Would you raise your hands? God bless you. God bless the young lady. Someone else, I now believe. Don't tempt him as in the day of provocation. Don't think because we go to church on Sunday or keep the Sabbath, Paul said you that keep days or moons or so forth, I'm afraid of you. The law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the thing can never make the worshiper perfect. But Christ makes you perfect. Perfect in the sight of God. He takes away your sin, takes condemnation from you, gives you His love and joy. Would you enter into rest now? Someone else raise your hand and say, I have did that. God bless you, young lady, over here to my left. God bless you, the man sitting to my right. Entering into his rest. Think of it just now. Pray. Just as I am, Lord. Without one plea, I'm no good. Nothing I can offer you. But just my old worn out sinful life. Will you receive me? Cleanse, relieve. Because I promise, I'll believe. Oh, Lamb of God, I come. I now come believing that now I've passed from death unto life because right here in my seat I've accepted you as my Savior and I feel peace in my heart. Five has raised up their hands. Would another one that feels that way? Raise your hand. If you're not a Christian, accept Him just now. If you profess to be a Christian and have not been that kind of, you're still a sinner. No matter what life you, you've done or how you try to make yourself, what you do is not accepted. It's what He done. Your own righteousness won't be accepted. If you quit smoking just because you said, well, I better quit smoking because I profess Christianity, God don't accept it. If you quit lusting after women just because that you're making yourself do it, God don't accept it. That's something you do. That's works. It's grace that saves you. Has God come to you and taken the whole thing out of you? That's the next thing. You say, I joined church and so I had to quit these things. God didn't accept that. Nothing you can offer. He only accepts what Christ gives. He gives you eternal life and takes it from you. Will you receive it? Out on the stormy wild sea, come anchor your soul in the haven of rest. Why don't you raise your hand? The message is over now. Let's just worship now. I'll say the wild sea no more. The tempest may sweep or yourself loose. Close your eyes. Feel a sweet spirit. That's worship. 
The message is over. This is worship. Let the light of my house shine on me. Oh, shine on me. Oh, Lord, shine on me. Oh, let feels real good. Raise your hand. That's sweet, humble spirit. That's it. To be like Jesus. Just to be like Just worship.